In this tutorial, we'll see how to visualize, represent, and manipulate a PDP file using VMD. So we have already downloaded the PDP file 1IL2, that's for the aspartyl tRNA synthetase, and have visualized it in the text format. So we'll feed this file into the VMD software. So first we go to files and add it as a new molecule and then we browse into the directory where the file is saved. So I'm already inside the directory. So that's 1IL2.pdb and I open it up and it automatically recognizes as a PDB file. So I load it. So this is the representation that we get, which you can see is a line representation here. So we can change the representation to a more uh, acceptable format where we can easily visualize and distinguish between different components, different molecules in the PDP file. So every time you need to do some operation on the PDP file, you need to highlight the molecule type that's being loaded out here because you might have other molecules loaded here as well. So the first thing that we'll do is just change the background. So the background here is by default black. So a more acceptable background for easy visualization, I think, would be white. So we can go to graphics and colors and then select display in the category and then in names we select the background and then we select white so you see the background is changed to white now so we are going to close this go to graphics again and click on representation and as you can see the representation out here is in the cpk format which is basically a ball and stick kind of model you can change this representation in the drawing method so it has a pull down menu and we go here and change it to a new cartoon format but still you can see that you cannot distinguish between the different molecule types so you can make out faintly vaguely that uh, this is the tRNA and this is the protein but there are other molecules involved as well so the first thing that we'll do is we'll change the coloring method so when we change the coloring method to chain it automatically colors itself by using the different chains that are in the PDB file that's a b and c d so AB basically stands for the aspartyl tRNA synthetase that's colored in black and orange respectively. And uh, chain C and D stands for the tRNA molecule that's colored in blue and red here. If you want to display the other molecule types that are here, for instance, the water molecule, the crystal water molecules that are used to solve the structure, you can say rest name HOH. And then again, we need to change the representation to, let's say, van der Waals. So you see all the water molecules are being represented here. You can change the chain representation for the water molecule to name, so that only the oxygens of the water molecules are represented here. So there's no hydrogen here. The hydrogens could be added at a later stage. We could deselect a particular representation by clicking twice on the shown representation, just like, let's say, we want to deselect the water molecules. So we click twice on it and you see the water molecules are all gone. We could bring it back by clicking it twice again. So what we are interested in here is just the chain A, which consists of the aspartyl tRNA synthetase bound to the aspartic acid. Now mind you, the aspartic acid is in the form of aspartyl adenosine 5-monophosphate. So we'll have to edit that at a later stage to aspartic acid by using Chimera, which we'll see in the next video. So for now, we'll just go ahead and save all of chain A out here. So we are going to deselect these two representations first and create a new representation. And we are going to just select, let's say, chain A. So once we select chain A, and is, as you can see, it's in the cartoon representation, you see the tRNA is also gone, but we can't still see the aspartic Acid. So in order to also represent the aspartyl 5' prime monophosphate properly out here, we need to change the drawing method to, let's say, a licorice representation. But once we do that, we see everything is smudged up, like everything is so complex out here. We cannot distinguish the protein from the ligand, that's the aspartyl uh, adenosine monophosphate. So what we'll do is, we'll try to represent the protein as a new cartoon, and the ligand as a licorice. Moreover, you also see some of the water molecules that is present in chain A also being displayed out here. 
so if I just zoom in a bit so you can always zoom in here by using your scroll mouse button and you see these little dots these are the oxygens for the water molecules so we want to get rid of all of this before processing so firstly what we'll do is we'll have the protein only in chain A and represent that as a new cartoon so in order to achieve that we just type chain A and protein so you see all the water molecules getting disappeared and then we'll select the new cartoon drawing method and next we want to represent the ligand that's the aspartyl adenosine 5 prime monophosphate so as you might have seen while exploring the PDB file in text format that the residue name for this uh, aspartyl 5 prime monophosphate adenosine 5 prime monophosphate is AMO so we'll have the rest name here in its place in order to represent it correctly so chain A and rest name AMO we click enter and since it's uh, not a standard uh, amino acid or let's say part of a protein sequence that's why it's not being represented as a new cartoon so we again need to change that representation to let's say a licorice but you see the colors are uh, getting merged with each other so we'll change the coloring method to name that's the name of the element that's present in the ligand here so all the nitrogens are just make this bigger and zoom in a bit more and as you can see all the nitrogens are being represented as blue all the carbons as green all the oxygens as red and then you have a phosphorus atom here that's represented in yellow so that's the coloring method in uh, the name format so once we have these two representations together by using these keywords or let's say the language of representation in BMD we can then pull these together and you know save the file in a PDB format that will consist only of the aspartyl tRNA synthetase protein along with the aspartyl 5 prime monophosphate so once we have the system ready we are going to save it as a separate PDB file for use later with Chimera for editing the structure and uh, you know changing the AMO to aspartic acid and also you know uh, changing the LASP to DASP so we go to file and then we point at save coordinates so it's the file type is already selected as a PDB now the selected atoms if you don't put anything here then it will automatically select all the atoms that are being represented and it will again be the whole structure with all the molecules involved so we have to be specific by using exactly the representative language that we have used here and merge these two representations together in order to do that we'll first type for the protein that's chain a and protein we'll put a bracket alongside so that it's a different representation in itself or another bracket and then chain a and rest name AMO so that'll do it that'll save the aspartyl uh, tRNA synthetase along with the aspartic acid uh, monophosphate so we go to click on save and as you can see I'm already in the workspace so I'm gonna give it a name I'm gonna give a name for the PDB and uh, it has to be a different name from the one which is already saved that's one IL2 so let's say we save it as a M O A S P R S dot PDP. Click on save and there you go. So you can view this newly saved file again in the text format or you can load this out here once again and see if the chains that we wrote exactly the chain A is intact there. So we'll do that in a minute but before that let's look at the other functionalities of VMD. So as you can see, I can rotate the molecule by hovering, by using my mouse button, the left clicked mouse button. But what about translating the molecule that is moving in this direction or that direction along the axis? So there's a shortcut for it, which is if you press T on your keyboard, that stands for translate. And you'll see a hand appearing here. 
and then if you move the molecule you can see it be getting translated then if you click R again it will go back to the rotate mode and then you can rotate the molecule again but if you want to also represent uh, C for instance label uh, certain atom types uh, then what you can do is you can press one on your keyboard as a shortcut so that will allow you to see the labels on different atoms wherever you click on the molecule so let's say I want to see the atom in this loop region here so if I click then you can see it's ASP86 so 86 is the residue number ASP is the aspartic acid the residue name and CA is the C alpha atom of that particular residue similarly if we let's say select a residue inside the binding pocket like let's say this guy out here yeah and so you see it's a valine at number 483 and it's a C alpha atom of valine as well so if you want to remove the labels so you go to graphics and then labels and as you can see these labels are marked out here whatever you have selected before so you can click on both of them together by pressing on the shift button on your keyboard and delete them together so the labels are gone now some of the other capabilities of uh, VMD are uh, let's see so the representation of the molecule this is an orthographic representation but the default that you will find in VMD is a perspective so you see it's slightly changing it's like as if you're looking from looking at, uh, at the molecule from a perspective so you see the nearer it is it's uh, bigger in size whereas the further it is it's located as smaller but we usually prefer using the orthographic representation because it creates beautiful images or publication quality images let's say you want to measure distance between two atoms just like labeling the atoms there's another shortcut for it that's number two on your keyboard so if you press number two on your keyboard then this cross sign again appears and now you got to select two atoms for which you want to calculate the distance between so first let's say we select one atom here in the loop this guy out here that's again as 86 the C alpha atom and then another one out here so once you press select the other atom it finds the distance between the two so it's the distance between histidine residue number 114 and aspartic acid residue number 86 and the distance is annotated in blue color that's 19.36 angstrom so the unit out here is angstrom like the atomic levels if you want to remove the labels for the distances so you go to graphics and click on labels so first of all uh, you go to atoms and then you have the two atoms that we had selected to gather the distance from that are being you can highlight those two together and then click on delete and then we go for the bonds which is basically the distance that have been represented so once you select that and click on delete it disappears again another powerful capability of VFD is the console that it has so it's called TKCon so you can start by going to extension and then clicking on TK console so it will show you white screen with a console like uh, thing in here where you can type your own commands so the commands that it uses is a special scripting language called TCLTK and it has a lot of capabilities like calculating different properties like average positions center of geometry center of mass then number of native contacts dipoles radius of gyration hydrogen bonds and a lot of other things and this is my personal favorite so I strongly encourage you to have a look into it just well you don't need much of a detail in uh, for this tutorial uh, on TK console but then again I'll just give you a couple of examples of its basic capabilities so if you want to calculate let's say the center of geometry of this whole system here we can do it by typing in a simple command so first we need to annotate the atom selection so I'll select the whole system by using a special keyword called cell so if I type set cell which means it will keep everything stored inside the cell which is a short form for selection and then atom select which is the command for selecting the specific atom types and then top stands for the topology 
and then all which means all the atoms in the system are selected together and then I close the third bracket and if I press enter then you'll see that it has done a selection which it has named as atom select 15 since I have already selected a few other atoms before therefore the number that it annotates here is 15 but for you if you start it the first time then you'll see it says atom select 0 so once we have this atom selection stored in cell we can go ahead and operate on this to calculate different properties so first of all let's calculate the center of geometry of this protein so which takes into account all the XYZ coordinates of the atoms and calculates its center so measure the command is measure for measuring anything any of the properties and CENTR center and then dollar select so we need to have this dollar beforehand just to it's it, it acts as a pointer just to point towards that selection and then if you press enter you will get the center of geometry of the system which is in the x direction in the x coordinate it's 8.04 in the y coordinate it's 0.49 and in the z coordinate it's 9.73 let's say we want to also calculate the maximum and the minimum coordinates of the system like in different directions x y and z direction so we can use the same command measure and then min max which stands for maximum and minimum and then dollar s e l again if you press enter we'll see first the minimum coordinates in the x y z direction so x y and z and as you can see they are all in negative and the maximum coordinates in the x y z direction so I should also mention that all these measurements are in angstrom so VMD measures everything in the unit of angstrom the length also in the extension menu you'll find a few other capabilities like analysis which contains a lot of different analytical uh, procedures that you can do that you can operate on the structure or on a trajectory that you have loaded after running a simulation so these are analyze FEP that is free energy perturbation ABPA so it calculates the electrostatics and then there's collective variables contact map heat map so there's a lot of capabilities hydrogen bonds which is very important non-covalent interaction and then you can also calculate the thermodynamic properties like NAMD energy and stuff like that and then you have the Ramachandran plot which Damien has already talked to you about in his lectures and also you have the root mean square deviation which calculates the deviation of a particular structure from an initial structure or an average structure you have the salt bridges which is a combination of the electrostatic interaction and the hydrogen bonds you have a sequence sphere which actually shows you the sequence and in the data uh, pull down menu you have the data import capabilities and PDB database queries so a lot of things in modeling you have adding the ions adding the solvation box so these are the pre-processing steps for running a simulation which you can do from VMD and uh, then you have a torsion plot which actually plots uh, a map of the dihedral angles that are there in the protein or the trajectory and then in visualization you can also create a movie by going to movie maker so if you click on this I'll just show you this as an example so let's say you have a trajectory well this is a static structure that you have but let's say you have a, a number of frames as opposed to just one frame here so when you have a number of frames let's say you have 5000 frames which means it's a trajectory so what you can do is you can go to this option and select a certain renderer which will render the video for you make a movie for you out of the trajectory that is out of the moving frames that you have here like the structure will actually move around and fluctuate and you can change a lot of features in the movie setting so you need to select trajectory here and the format you can select animated gif or mpeg format or jpeg frames whatever according to your uh, suitability and you set the working folder the working directory and then you can press on make movie and it will make a beautiful movie for you so in a similar way you can also take snapshots of this so let's say I want to take a snapshot at this position or let's say I want to focus on the binding pocket here which is around this area so I'm just going to tweak with the 
graphics a bit. So I go to representation again and I'll make the protein molecule. So you see this is very dark. So the ligand is actually not visible properly. So what I'll do is I'll change the material from opaque to let's say transparent. So you see it makes it lighter the protein and the ligand is in focus and you can also pick certain residues in the binding pocket and select them and you know focus on the ligand mainly and the binding pocket. So I'll just change the display settings to let's say I'll pick the render mode GLSL so that it's visible properly. So you see it's beautiful and we can change the lighting as well. So you see we just have turned on light 0 and light 1. So we can also turn on light 2 and light 3 as well. So you see it's gotten a lot brighter than before. And we're going to stretch the screen a little bit. Going to position this in the center by pressing T on the keyboard and just press R again back to the rotation mode. So and also this is this is a distraction here the XYZ coordinates. Well, sometimes uh, when you take a publication uh, rendered figure in uh, having the XYZ coordinates, it's useful in certain manner. It depends on what you want to show in the figure, but at most of the time like uh, in this case I don't think the XYZ coordinates are important here so we can remove it unless you have a membrane structure here which is orientated along the X and Y coordinates and is perpendicular to the Z coordinate here in which case showing the XYZ coordinate is uh, much more useful so in order to remove the coordinates representation that we he have here the axis representation You'll go back to display and then click on the display settings. So you see there's a lot of different settings that you have. The one which we are going to focus on is the screen height. So it's set to 6. If you decrease it enough, like let's say to 2, you'll see that the structure comes into focus. And once we zoom out of this, the XYZ axis disappear. Just going to bring the structure to the center again. So you see, it's a white background with the figure in it. It's beautiful. And in order to take a picture, now we go to File and we click on Render. So there are different rendering modes for the picture. There's Snapshot, there's Tachyon. Tachyon is most useful, but you need an additional add-on package for that. And you need to install it separately. But Snapshot is like OpenGL representation, so it's easier to take a picture. So let's say we... Uh, so the extension here is Targa or TR TGA, which you can convert to a PNG format or let's say a TIFF format or a JPEG format if you want. So let's start rendering. So if you click on start rendering, it'll show you the picture, it'll show you the snapshot that it's taken at that particular position. If you select a different position, let's say like this, and you bring into focus the ligand again, which is the AMO molecule. I'm just going to close this and then do a rendering again. Let's say start rendering. It'll take a snapshot at that position. Fascinating, isn't it? So finally, as decided, we'll go back to opening the structure that we have just saved, like saving the chain A portion of it, which contains the aspartyl tRNA synthetase bound to AMO, which is aspartyl adenosine 5 prime monophosphate uh, we'll go back to the text edit mode uh, you can use your notepad to open it so I'm just going to close this here so I'm quitting VMD so when you press on the cross here it will ask you really quit you say yes and it's gone yeah it took a while because of the capabilities of RAM and stuff like that all right so we will open the structure now in uh, in, in a text editing program and as I said before that you can use any text editing program to open this PDB file the newly uh, saved and created PDB file so I'm going to use GBIM here so if you remember we named the file as amo asprs underscore asprs.pdb so if you press enter it'll open the file in the text format and here you go as you can see it only has the chain A here, whereas in the previous structure, if you compare with the previous structure, 
in the text format you'll find there was a lot of different things written on top in the first place and it started off with chain C yes you can see it here it's chain C starting off with chain C with the first atomic position whereas in the newly built structure that we have here it starts off with chain A and then goes further down along so I'm gonna quickly just scroll through this file towards the very end and you'll see that it ends with chain A and the new molecule that's here it's ligand that's AMO that's also saved everything else that was there in this structure in the other text file uh, in the other PDB file that we opened in the text format are deleted.